generally accepted that the Velocity 1 yoke is pretty good in most respects, apart from the centre detent in the pitch axis. The electronics are okay, with no flat spot, but the physical centering is very abrupt, making it difficult to make subtle adjustments when landing. I searched YouTube online for any DIY remedies and then opened mine up to have a look. I found a very simple solution that doesn't seem to have already been discovered, so I made this video to explain it. The usual disclaimer, this is entirely at your own risk and I take no responsibility for any problems that are potentially possible when attempting hardware surgery. Having said that, if you're reasonably competent with these things and are careful, it's an extremely simple mod and can even be restored in the very unlikely event that you don't find it improves the yoke. The top cover of the yoke is easily removed by unscrewing the recessed crosshead screws in the base. Most are fully accessible but there are also two more under the front edge of the rubber strips at the front corners. You just need to peel back about 6mm to get access to them. Then when you look inside you'll see this side shaft with the centering springs. The really abrupt centering is caused by these plastic stoppers either side of the centre support. So when the yoke is pushed past the centre position one spring abruptly stops pushing and you have to overcome the initial pressure of the other spring. My mod is to simply remove these two stops from the shaft so that the springs can carry on past that point and each one can gradually take over from the other. It makes the midpoint slightly less positive but that's quite normal with real yokes anyway. It's quite easy to remove them in a non-destructive way. You just need to undo the two clamps at either end of the shaft and lift the shaft up very slightly. Here's one coming off and then you can slide the shaft out of the middle, take the other one away and then slide the shaft back in. It's a bit doing this with the camera and then push this one back on. I make the extra coil springs, the extra length goes at each end and the lesser ones to the middle. Back down there. And then put the clamp back on. Tighten up the screws after you've taken them out. These are the two pieces that came out. And now as you can see the spring doesn't stop abruptly at there. It carries on until it's played right out so it gradually takes over the tension on the other one. So now when you move the yoke in the middle you can make very precise adjustments with minimal resistance and yet it can still do the full range with no problem. It seems too simple to be true but uh, I can't see any downside to it. You can always put them back. It's made the yoke so much more precise for me when landing. I've also ordered one of Van Dyke's binding fixers 
a clever plastic printed device with rollers that fits on the front of the yoke to support it from underneath and prevent any sag when using one handed. So if I can imagine it, it it's the slight drawback of this design and that's all it needed. A very clever chap who's uh, thought of that. Um, when it arrives I'll put it on and hopefully make it even better. But as you can see it's vastly improved already. When you put it back together these are the screws underneath down the recessed holes that hold the top on and then the two hidden ones are underneath each corner. There's one there one there. Um, you'll find that you need a, a very thin screwdriver, this sort of thing's no good at all. I had to use one of these so that the arm can go down the hole because these are too thick and the head of course. And that's it.